people stare at me all the time. I think of it as, as like a social experiment, you know, kind of when I'm walking down the street. They stop for a second glance or they stare at me and they're like, I mean ma'am, I mean sir, I mean ma'am. It just means I'm representing all the ideas that I hope I'm representing. And floating between worlds is important to me. Uh, I was born in Garden Grove, California, and then my mom kind of moved me around the country. I'm super restless and I'm always wanting to travel and wanting to go do different things. And, and then my mom got me uh, my first SLR when I was four, for my 14th birthday. And then I was just like addicted from that day on. I was photographing a lot of uh, skater kids, like youth, like kids that were my age, just all of us just running around and kind of getting into trouble. I would save all my money to tr just travel as much as I could even when I was in high school. I like traveling and then seeing amazing style while I'm there and, tr and like photographing it in like a stylistic way, not just a f photojournalistic way. Mm -hmm. If you're in a place like middle America, which I was for a really long time, you're, you know, people aren't as brave or as outspoken with the way that they dress. Anything out of the norm, you got picked on. You're either a football player or a cheerleader. You know, I would just shut myself out from all of Texas, and I would just go into my own little world, and I would keep taking photos, and I would put them online, and I would, like, create my own little community. And I'm a little bit shy, but when I get the camera in my hand, I know that, I, that that's, like, my worst enemy. So I just have to get out there and... If I see somebody that's super inspiring or, you know, they're wearing a certain thing or they have this most, the most interesting face, I have nothing to lose. I want that photograph. I want to capture that beauty, you know, so I mm -hmm. run up to them and try mm -hmm. to, like, jump in. But then there's something special that happens when you can break through to, like, a complete stranger and, and get them to open up in a really raw way, kind of try to capture them in the best light. Um, that just shows their personality. People don't stop to look at the beautiful things in everyday life. When I see two people that are like sweeping and they're both wearing these beautiful mm -hmm. blue, mm -hmm. bright blue uniforms next to each other, mm -hmm. it's fascinating to me. Yeah. And so I love incorporating that into my own personal style. Boots that don't necessarily have like a glamorous side to them or like a Levi's jumpsuit from like the 70s. I, d I didn't know at first, I was like, I don't know if that's like me, but I'm gonna try to make it me because it's just such an, I just was super inspired by it when I saw it, so. And this one been in my ear since I was 16 years old. Everyone thinks it's a little staple. I just added like little gold hoops. I just like the subtlety and the gold on the tone of my skin. I get a lot of my accessories or my clothes or anything either in thrift stores or while I'm traveling just to make it more special, you know. It says humble me on it. Uh, most of my tattoos are like daily reminders. I like stay humble and constantly remember where I come from or the 500 places I come from. <laughs> and it's hard in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. It says boogie in the south. It represents how I feel about all the positive things that I did bring from living in Texas. It's a fighter jacket. My friend was gonna get rid of it because it was too big on her and I was like, give me that jacket. Weird and funky blue and goes with my blue pants. A $10 moto jacket and I just cut the sleeves off. Coat liner. I loved the shape of it. It was like in the little boys section. I think it's supposed to be for like the inside of a jacket liner but I just wear it on the outside. My hair. I always have to go in and kind of draw a photo of what I want because they just, you know, no one asks for like weird steps or little things that I ask them to do. This one right here, this is I'm not frightened by anyone's perception of me. And that was my very first tattoo and I just basically got it because I was finally okay with just being 100% me and I was like, no one is ever going to tell me who I am. I think it's the classiest thing you can you can have, you can wear, you know, just to be a humble individual. So this tattoo right here, it means invest in the youth in Greek. I am very passionate about working with like young kids and mentoring them and trying to get them uh, passionate about something or or even just spending time to listen to them. I'm a huge hip hop fan. Hip hop is a revolution. There are a lot of things in hip-hop that degrade women, so a lot of people give me a lot of <laughs> uh, grief for that, but I try to take it for the positive empowerment side of hip-hop, and I, that's pretty much all I listen to. I like to boogie, that's, that's my thing. <laughs> Just trying to be as conscious as possible when I'm photographing a woman to like represent her in a, 
in a way that isn't constructed. I, I don't ever want to like um, expose women in a negative way because I'm super passionate about like, you know empowering them. There are a lot of places in middle America when I did live there it was like, still extremely ignorant. Um, people are scared. I never came fully, fully out until I was like away from that environment because I didn't feel safe. To be able to just hold my head high and walk down the street looking like a boy slash girl slash I'm not sure who, what that is, you know what I mean? Still being myself is hopefully going to make it easier for somebody, you know, 20 years from now. Constant progress is what I strive for.